Hello and uh, welcome to Aquarium Movement Skills screencast. Um, today's topic or tonight's topic is going to be on the drive reduction theory of motivation. Okay, so we're going on to motivation and a key focus behind motivation is we're going to have a look at a theory that kind of proposes that if things are too easy, sometimes you can reduce your drive. Now, the theory behind that, we're going to have a look at what causes people to lose their drive and then we're going to evaluate some strategies that can be used to re-motivate people who have this concept of drive reduction reduction so if i look over onto the next slide then what is the drive reduction theory you do not need to draw the diagram that is just there as a visual kind of symbol of what happens when you reduce your drive so you've got this initial desire to learn okay you do something well okay so you actually do it the learning's accomplished and then then what happens is you kind of reduce the drive to learn so basically you know you kind of get something too easy you might have gone to a class where you find things too easy a beginner's class in something i don't know and then suddenly you find it so easy you can't be bothered so basically what you do need to write in your cornell notes the description behind the drive reduction theory is there is an initial drive to learn this is reduced when the skill is one of the following three variables one it's mastered or overlearned two it becomes boring or finally it is too difficult so it's not always about being mastered you're too good at it sometimes you can find things boring so you can't be bothered doing it secondly you find it too difficult so you might think you know you might be one of those people who finds maths very difficult therefore you just didn't try okay and you'll exactly be able to relate to that so what happens as a result of this and this is what it is that's an explanation this is the reason why the explanation is what it is. And then you need to say, okay, so if they're the causes, what's the effect? The effect is it leads to a decreased motivation, which reduces drive. In order to remotivate, new goals and challenges should be set. So you need to think about goals that we can set that are challenging and are variable. Now, that leads us on nicely to the next slide, which is basically, you know, it's a separate topic, but you have to be able to critically evaluate motivational strategies which is quite good because we're looking at a theory that's saying that you reduce your motivation when things are too hard boring or too easy so when that does happen what strategies can we use what motivational strategies can we use in order to remotivate so on to the next slide so i'm going to start off the first thing we need to do is set achievable goals okay so achievable goals are, are effective because if they're set perform all gain motivation so for example if i said to someone who's extremely obese your aim is to try and improve your uh, time on the treadmill by one minute each session that basically is achievable for them and they feel like they're actually achieving something will lead to an increase in motivation remember everything is linking back to this word motivation or if we're looking at someone's diet it might be to add an item of fruit or veg to a meal one meal a day every week okay so you're basically looking to make sure you always have one fruit or veg portion with one of your meals in the day okay so another motivational strategy is, is to do with significant others and this is a, a posh word for role models so basically positive role models if they are used in the right way they can really help people improve their motivation so for example you've got someone like johnny wilkinson okay a young person may look at him and think he's got a good physique he has a good diet therefore they want to follow his exercise plan they want to follow his diet you might be a young female and you look up at jessica ennis and you see her six-pack and you think i want to be like that you might be a young male looking at jessica ennis's ennis six-pack for all the wrong reasons but we'll move on so going on from there punishment another way you can motivate someone is by punishing and now this involves providing a negative stimulus that's a description of it Positive is best used for autonomous performers because it basically strengthens the stimulus response bond towards the desired response. So, for example, uh, let's say, let's put it into balanced, active, healthy lifestyle. So, somebody has not um, stuck to a diet plan they're supposed to do. What do you do? You say, right, you have to do 10 laps okay around the athletics trap because you haven't stuck to your diet a bit harsh i know but that's something you could use that is a negative stimulus what happens is it weakens the stimulus response bond towards the undesired response which is eating bad food when you're supposed to be on a controlled diet and it strengthens the stimulus response bond towards having a good diet therefore 
that's why you use punishment okay but like i said it's only best best use of autonomous performance because we use it with people who are fragile or who have low self-confidence it could lead to them withdrawing from the diet or exercise program full stop moving on you then go on to intrinsic motivation Now, the best motivational strategy of the lot is intrinsic motivation because you if you have the description here is an internal drive to succeed this will lead to something called self-fulfillment and enjoyment now that is the reason why people you go to the sports clubs that you go to okay so if you go to rowing you're in a rowing club and you go there every night after college you go there because you love it and if you have that inter internal self-fulfillment enjoyment of going something it's the most important type of motivation because it's the thing that is going to ensure a lifelong participation okay because it's based upon you wanted to be better yourself, you're enjoying something. It's not based on an ego orientation, which means what somebody else wants you to do. You're doing it for yourself, therefore there's more likely that you'll persist. It's a key word you can add on top of that. You'll persist, carry on in a balanced, active, healthy lifestyle. Then we go on to something called reinforcement. So reinforcement can be positive, negative, or punishment. We talked about punishment. So basically reinforcement, we've used this kind of in memory strategies already. So positive reinforcement could be used in the following way. Praise. So you're saying, well done for eating healthy. Or it doesn't have to be a, a verbal praise. You might get, you know, when people go to Fat Club or, I don't know, Slimming World, whatever it's called, they will go there and they might have a Slimmer of the Month award and they get a certificate saying you know you lost the lost most weight okay they get that certificate they're really happy they're probably going to eat a cream cake but the idea is that because they got the certificate they won't go and eat a cream cake and i think yes they're praising me for having a good diet for losing weight therefore i'm going to go the next week and i'm going to keep losing weight and it starts to work like that so i'll leave the negative um reinforcement we'll have a look at that tomorrow and the final type of motivational strategy is extrinsic motivation which i've kind of just talked about and done there so i'm going to change the example extrinsic motivation is motivation from an external source so outside of your body it's nothing to do with enjoyment so this could be we'll change certificate for healthy eating to you getting a trophy okay for uh let's say i don't know winning a park run or like a kind of a, a jogging a little kind of middle distance run around your local park so basically you get a trophy that's an extrinsic motivation so when you get that extrinsic motivation e.g a trophy or you get some money for winning something or you get a prize for being the number one slimmer uh, at a slimming world club okay it is absolutely vital this can be a vital motivational tool if used correctly so what you have is if you get it it's fantastic when you're a young person you know you get these kind of um, certificates for taking part in like a football school I don't know you go to a football sessions in the half term holidays you get a certificate for taking part and it's brilliant to get people involved in sport tomorrow we'll have a look at the, the negatives behind this okay but for now what I need from you is a basic description of uh, the motor sorry the drive reduction theory so go back to the objectives you need to have explain the effect of drive reduction and what is the drive reduction theory how does it affect the balanced active healthy lifestyle what causes it what's the effects and then you need to evaluate or explain and evaluate motivational strategies that could be used to increase the balanced active healthy lifestyle call down notes please thank you